stiffest or most reckless wrestler you ever faced? It doesn't have to be WWF. It could be anywhere. Stiffest or reckless? Well, like, it, we we wrestled that style, so there was no being stiff with us ever. Never did we ever complain, and nobody, I mean, now, was there times when I wished I wasn't in the ring? Um, like, we we just got out of camp, and uh, uh, we had, I, you know, when we were young, I had to take Vader's splash. I think he did it off the second or top rope. And he goes, afterwards, I go, you know, my, my ribs are like cracked or something. I go, what the? He goes, I'm sorry, guys, but my knees are shot from football, so I got to put all his stomach st <laughs> stuck out like that. He goes, I got to put all the weight on you. I went, why didn't you tell me that before? Because I would have tried to brace more or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but uh, I – reckless um, – I mean, because some people uh, would say we were we we learned really learned honed our skill. So some people might say we were like, because we never hurt anybody, but we were brought up in Minneapolis and in the business in a uh, which would be clo a, a Minneapolis style and a Calgary style and a Japanese style be all very close in the same realm. That's how we were taught, and, and if we did something, it was laid in. Some guys would call that reckless. Not, not reckless that you hurt, but a stiffer, tight, snugger style of wrestling. Mm -hmm. That's the, how we were taught to work. That's what we did. But not can I say, I, I can't say I've ever hurt nobody. Um, uh, I received hundreds of stitches, never cared. Um, I wanted it. I, I, would don't, I said, don't hit me with anything unless you're going to hit me. If it looks like shit, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. I said, if you're going to plan and hit me, you fucking hit me. My face, you run my face into the post. I don't put my hands up. You bring a chair and tap me on the head with it. I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. And I'm not going to sell it. You fucking hit me, hit me. That's the way we were taught. So did you, did you, did you ever have to, did you ever have to have like a come to Jesus meeting with someone who's basically giving you love taps? Um, not that I remember because. I, not that I can remember because I would just, I don't, I can't remember anything like that because it was when, when, when first of all, in the beginning, especially in WWE, we did stuff out of the realm in the first time. And that's what brought us to those first street fights in WCW with uh cactus or uh, Mick Foley, whatever you want to call him. Mm -hmm. um, because, Guys saw what we did with Pat and Paul Tanaka, Mid-South Coliseum. We went outside the ring, and that was where he found a home. We learned a little bit about that, the tag team tournament off of Stan Hansen and um, the great Teneru matches and um, working with the Bulldogs. Um, not outside, Pat, sometimes through the people, sometimes through the railing, watching and learning and the reaction they got and um, the antics. But you weren't allowed ever to touch a chair, a table, anything, or e you weren't even allowed to go outside the ring, but uh, was frowned on early WWF. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A gorilla monsoon, Adrian Adonis really reamed our asses out. We picked him up one time from the airport. We picked him up. We picked Bob Orton up from the airport, brought him in. We picked, we drove Jimmy Schnooker a lot. We, but we got Adrian Adonis and we drove him to a television in Minot, North, uh, South Dakota for AWA. And we told him over that we wrestle as the nasty, we, you know, this and that. And we wrestled the match. And then next thing, Adrian's in our face and he goes, uh, what the fuck was that? And we're like, what? What's wrong? What do we do? He goes, you telling me you're nasty boys. You're with your, I see your arm drags and, uh, clotheslines and uh, headlocks like, what's nasty what do you what what's wrong with you well i'm like we're like what what do you what he goes you take a pin out of your pocket and stab somebody's face in with it take spit in their face uh uh claw their eyeballs out take their face and ram it in their in your partner's armpit we went oh my god that's that's how pity city was born you know that type of stuff 
But even back then, when I, why I told that story, that Adrian gave us a lot of that. Roddy Piper helped us with a lot of that stuff. Um, Gorilla Monsoon would have a heart attack. God damn it, Sags. I told you about the spitting going to the ring because I would just pure just walk up and spit in people's faces. That Adrian told us that. And I would spit and they would spit back or throw stuff. He goes, You don't be, why you spit? You would drive Gorilla nuts because that was an old school thing. You don't, you know, you didn't, you didn't go outside. You didn't touch anything. You don't, chairs, by God, you touch a bell. You, that was, you know, by the end of the mid 90s, you know, um, where we started those, uh, street fight type style matches where you would grab a weapon or something or by by the end of the 90s guys were wheeling out dumpsters filled with shit and it was like a, a no nonsense bullshit i go that ain't what we started that, that you might call that hardcore or whatever to me that's horse shit hmm. you know what i mean we did those street fights in a way where integral things were brought in the ring at certain times that were involved into the angle leading up to that street fight taking place and they were done like that, and they really got over. But um, back in the day, you weren't like I said. You it was you 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 touched a chair or a table or anything like that. You were in you you were in big trouble. You know what I mean? 